Jain Dev everyone, I am Pankaj Kumar and today's lecture is about the peptides and polypeptides. Uh, it will be helping for the MSC CSIR and the ICMR and other GRF exams as well as the GATB, IIT JAM or the interviews. So in today's lecture we are going to read the most important thing. It, it is importance in terms of the in terms of the understanding of the proteins so if you know there will be two amino acids there will be two amino acid with this group coh and then h and then one r group so there will be another amino group amino acid with h r group co So what is happening? Whenever you will see, once it will bind, the OH group and the H group of this amino group will be part. Will give the water. It will release the water, OH from the carboxylic acid, and one hydrogen from the ammonia group. It will give you the this hydrogen bond sorry it will give you the one amide linkage <coughs> now this bond will call as So this bond will called as what? This bond will called as peptide bond. This bond is called as a peptide bond. So the important about this peptide bond is what? It is of amide linkage, and it uh, <coughs> it form because of the hydrolysis, and hydrolysis is a exergonic process. Okay, hydrolysis. Exothermic, or you can say exo exergonic reaction. You can say <coughs> peptide bond can be counted like uh, if there will be how many amino acids are there? Two amino acids are there. How many peptides bond you can see? One. So, if there will be twenty amino acid will be there. How many peptide bond you will see? Minus one. It will be around. It will be only nineteen peptide bonds. So, like that you can cal calculate the peptide bonds. And like that you can cal calculate the number of peptide bonds. The another important things about the this amino acid or the average amino acid weight will be around 138 so average you, you know how many amino acids are there around 22 amino acid are there if you'll find the average amino acid weight will be 138 but in case of the protein in case of protein if you'll see the protein amino acid it will be around 128 it will be around 128 so whenever the two amino acid will be form a peptide bond in the form of polypeptide then each bond will release one water and the mass of the water is how much the mass of the water will be around 1818 so the net amino acid weight we could have right average amino acid weight in a protein okay so average amino acid weight and then protein or in a peptide one once it will form this water will release at that time it will become 110 so you remember this 
that uh, average amino acid weight in a uh, protein it will be around 110 daltons now this is done <coughs> this is the important thing you can remember it apart from this we have to read the amino acid can be of single number like if you will see the amino acid amino acid have the uh, amino acid have the charges the same charges will be not or the same pk of amino acid will be not same for the protein so it will vary uh, because there will be so many amino acid will be attached in the protein and then it will not able to then it will be not able to make the same uh, pk value as the individual amino acid to have so commercial uh, you can see the function of the protein also change you just add it down here as partem as partem you know what it is it is a artificial sweet sweetening sweetener it is a artificial it is artificial sweetener it is a artificial sweetener and its scientific name uh, sorry its chemical name is what l aspartyl tyl l phenyl alanine why i am telling you this because whenever you will see the artificial sweetener or sweetening it comes in my our in our brain that it may be the carbohydrate or something but it is made up of the amino acid and this question is already asked that's why i am telling you that uh, aspartame is artificial sweetener it will also called as a neurostream it will also called as a neuro sweet sorry it will also called as a neuro sweet or neura sweet got it now now we'll see how the proteins and polypeptides are varied you can see here so they are very diverse like you can see the posterior pituitary is releasing what oxytocin and this oxytocin is just this oxytocin is just 9 made up of nine amino acid and it is contracting the uterine <laughs> so their function is uh, like far bigger than their size so some amino acid will be released from the uh, peptides are released from the hypothalamus like a thyrotropin releasing hormone its size is just three amino acid made up of three amino acid but its role is very important it will act on the anterior pituitary and it will release the thyrotropins like mushroom amanita amanita phalloides releasing the amanitin this is important and it is made up of just eight amino acid and it will inhibit the rna polymerase 2 it will inhibit rna synthesis so this is the important thing you have to remember it so most longest the most longest amino acid or peptide you can find and the titan the most longest protein you can see like a uh, titan in which which is present in the muscles and it's it contain around 227000 of amino acid it contain 27000 of amino acid which consist 30 lakh of dalton its weight is 30 lakh dalton now you, you can see uh, the <coughs> oligomeric and the protomer i mean uh, meaning of the oligomer oligomeric and protomeric protein so as you know hemoglobin globin hemoglobin have a alpha two alpha chain and two beta chain so this two alpha and two beta chain are the are called as a protomeric but two alpha will called as a oligomeric okay so if these are the two total four subunits are there like this four sub units are there and these four sub units are bound with the covalently sorry non covalently non covalently 
if this four uh, subunits are bind with a co non covalently then they will called as a oligomeric just co non covalently is not criteria first thing if they are identical if they are identical like either you can take a beta or either you can take a alpha identical it is then it is called as a oligomeric okay it will called as a oligomeric protein but for the same protein for the same hemoglobin if you will see this two are alpha and beta are non identical these are non identical there is a change in the sequence of the amino acids and then different amino acids and the different peptides will be there and they are bind with the non covalently then it is called as a <coughs> protomeric amino acid proto meric protein sorry protomeric protein so what if the proteins are or polypeptides are bind with the covalently if you will see the example of insulin so insulin have a two chain okay or actually three chains will be there a b c and then uh, c will be excluded so the chains the a b c which is bound bound by the covalently if it is covalently bound covalently bound chain not considered as not considered not considered as what as unit or as not considered as sub unit so this b and a and b chains r chains are simply a chain a chain not sub unit sub unit or protomer proto mer so this is the simple thing hope you understood this in if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment so you see uh, if there will be two amino acids then it is it is called as a peptide fine you can say is a peptide now if it is a three amino acid then you can say it is a dipeptide like that it will be like many it will be many then it will called as what poly peptide and there will be so many polypeptide so many polypeptide then it will called as what protein sometimes these peptides are simply made up of the amino acid but sometimes it will made up with the uh, it may bind with the proteins or uh, sorry it may bind with the carbohydrate or it may bind with the lipid so if it is a amino acid or we can say not amino acid we should say peptides if it is binding with the carbohydrate so what it will called it will form glyco glyco protein but if it is binding with the lipid then it will called as a glycolipid it will called as a uh, lipoprotein lipo protein sometime it will bind with the metals also so metallo protein it will called metallo protein in because of this uh, conjugate glyco uh, conjugates because of this conjugates it will form the most important enzyme so in this enzyme there will be conjugates will be there okay there will be conjugates and that 
is called as a this enzyme will call as a conjugate protein conjugate protein now this have a two uh, either it will have this conjugate proteins either it will have the cofactor cofactor which is bind with the conjugate protein like our enzyme simply i can write conjugate enzyme just conjugate enzyme then it will call as what together it will call as a holo enzyme together it will call as a holo enzyme what if this cofactor is not there only coenzyme is there or co uh, conjugate protein like enzyme is there only amino acids are there only then it will call as a then it is called as a apo enzyme apo enzyme now this cofactor also can be of this cofactor can be of two types cofactor can be either organic or metal it can be of two type either it will be organic compound so organic compound means what Uh, example you can see organic compound means vitamins in this vitamins if you will find vitamins are there example just so this vitamin can bind tightly or loosely if it is binding loose then it will called then it will called as a coenzyme if it is binding tight either by covalently or covalently or non covalently bond then it will called as a prosthetic group group the same you can see in this if it is binding with the metal it is binding with the metal or tightly or loose if it is binding with the loose then you will see or tight if it is binding loosely then what you will see you will see you will see metal activated metal activated enzyme metal activated enzyme if it is binding tightly then it will called as a metallo enzyme so hope so you understood this topics if you have any doubt you can ask me there in my in comments or uh, you biology you can ask there thanks for watching we'll meet in new video jai hind